Hello and welcome, in this video I'm going to be creating a program to visualise some sorting algorithms using Java and the Swing framework. Now the reason I'm using Swing rather than the newer Java FX is because I have to use Swing at university next semester, so I just wanted to get a bit of practice in. So anyways, first of all, what is a sorting algorithm and why are there so many different variations of them? A sorting algorithm is exactly what it sounds like. You have some kind of unordered data, but you want it to be in the correct order, so you pass it through the algorithm and it will put that data in the correct order. And the reason there's so many different variations of them is because the different ones have their own advantages and disadvantages depending on the kind of data you're dealing with. So for example, a merge sort is usually the go-to sorting algorithm because quite often it's the fastest one. But unfortunately it requires a second array of the same size of the array you're trying to sort. Which means if you're trying to sort a very large amount of data, then the merge sort probably isn't the best idea because you'll be using a lot of memory, in which case a heap sort might be a better option for you. So anyways, in this program I have an array of integers which I'll be passing into the sorting algorithms to do, well, their sorting on. But I need a way to actually visualise these algorithms working, which is where Java Swing comes in. Using Swing, I'm able to create a class and then extend the JPanel class, which is part of the Swing framework. From the JPanel class, I'm able to override a method called PaintComponent, which then allows me to draw shapes using a graphics object. In the PaintComponent method, I loop through the array and then draw a bar-shaped vertical rectangle, which height depends on that value of the array. So this is done left from right, so ideally, when the array is fully sorted, it should create some kind of staircase-looking thing, and when it's unsorted, it should look like a bar graph, of which the unsorted array and the bar chart-looking thing can be seen here. So now that the array is visualised, it was time to actually begin implementing some of the sorting algorithms, starting off with the bubble sort. So the way bubble sort works is that it loops through the array looking at the current value as well as the next value in the array. And if the next value is smaller, then it will swap them around, and it will keep doing this until the array is fully sorted. Unfortunately, doing that is actually incredibly inefficient, as in order to actually do that, it needs to loop through the entire array twice, which makes the bubble sort basically useless. So anyways, now if I go ahead and run the program using the bubble sort, you can see that the array is now sorted. But this was not visualised, because I would like to actually see the array go from unshuffled and unsorted to sorted. So I'm not sure if this is the best solution, but whatever. So rather than passing the raw array to the bubble sort method, I instead pass an object which contains the array as a, well, a member. And then inside of the bubble sort, rather than swapping the numbers directly, I call a method called swap, which is a member of the object which contains the array. So here's the swap method. So first of all, it just well, it swaps the two numbers over as it would in the bubble sort method anyway. But the real magic happens at the end of the method, where it calls repaint and sleep. So repaint causes Java Swing to just recall the paint component method, which I explained earlier in the video. And sleep for just causes the program to sort of sleep for a very short amount of time, so we can see what's happening. So with all that in place, when I rerun the program, I can see exactly what's happening. When I shuffle the array, I can see it getting shuffled, and when the bubble sort starts happening, I can see the bubble sort happening. So now we have the visualisation system in place, we can start creating some more sorting algorithms to see how they work. Um, so let's create the insertion sort. Insertion sort starts by looking at the value at index 1 of the array, and it will use that value as a key. It will then compare this key value with the array values below it. If it is a larger number than the key, then the larger number becomes the value of the array index above it, effectively moving it up. So these comparisons just continue until it either finds a smaller number or reaches the end of the array, where it will reinsert the key value into the array where this happens. And this is just repeated, going up the array, which eventually causes it to be sorted. So anyways, let's see the insertion sort in action after shuffling the array. You can see the bars moving from left to right until it eventually inserts the value that was once at the end of the sorted part of the array, before repeating the process until the array is fully sorted. So much like the bubble sort, this algorithm requires the array to be iterated over twice, which just isn't as efficient as other sorting algorithms, but insertion sort actually has quite a lot of its own advantages. So for example, if your array is already sorted, but you just want to insert a value into the correct place, i.e. the array is still sorted after you put the value in, then it can actually do that incredibly quickly. So anyways, let's do another method of sorting, which is called the selection sort. So selection sort works by, again, looping through the array twice using nested loops. But in the inner loop, it will try and find the index of the smallest unsorted value and then swap that number with whatever value that the outer loop is currently at. And this eventually leads to the array being sorted. So this can be seen working here. The algorithm is selecting the lowest value in the unsorted part of the array and then putting that in the correct position, making the array sorted. 
After implementing the selection sort, I'll just continue to implement some more algorithms such as quick sort, name sort and merge sort which can be seen here. Um, but unfortunately, because I've just been very busy lately, explaining all of these algorithms and more would have just taken a bit too long for my liking, so if you want to know more about these algorithms, I've left a lot of links in the description below which I use to learn these algorithms myself. So anyways, I'm going to implement some more of these algorithms, then do some finishing touches, and then in a few days time I will release a video which will show all of these algorithms implemented here, one after another. So anyway, shout out and thank you to all my Patreon supporters, so thank you Hayden, Kelly Crazyman, Timothy Gibbons, Alan Fernandez, Timo Schrader, Neil Blakely Milner, Alchemic, James Ritchie, Lucas Durenberger and Nate Brown. Thank you for the support and I apologise if I pronounced any of your names wrong. So anyways, once again thank you for watching, uh, like I said I'll just be doing some finishing touches and implementing a few more algorithms and then I'll release a video hopefully in just a few days more time. As per usual source code as well as download links will be in the description below, so anyways, uh, see you next time.